Hey guys, welcome back. Okay, I'm DD. This is the DD Trader channel. Uh, if you're liking this stuff that's coming out, please like the video, please subscribe, please hit the notification bell, it really helps the channel. And uh, today we're going to do the second part of this Bob Volman scalping series. So if you look back on the first video, you'll be able to see where I explained the seven setups from the book Forex Price Action Scalping. And today we're gonna to go into some of Bob's trades. Um, for a number of years, he sent these like uh, Dropbox folders that had every trade that he would have made or, you know, it's kind of like his notes on the market. So he's not saying that he made these trades, but he's going back and helping his students, um, you know, look at the market through his lenses. And they were really beneficial. beneficial. So. If you want to understand, you know, his methods and his setups, it's great to uh, take a look at these um, these notes and these uh, setups. So I'm just going to go through it with you over here. Ch chose a random week, uh, January 16th, 2017. Okay, and um, all of his notes were in EU, um, the euro dollar, and he uh, used a 70 tick chart. Okay, so that's important to remember over here. So let's go to this first chart. So now he starts over here on the first day. This is the Monday, January 16th. And over here is the EU open. Um, he's, uh, it's 8 a.m. GMT, I think it would be 7 a.m. So he's a little, um, has a different hour over here. This is the EU open. And, and you see over here, he's building a, um, a range over here. All right, here's the first top because here's the, it was resistance here support here i'm sorry and now it's becoming resistance and then you have that range you know going through here you have the bottoms where this is where he's going to build the box because now you have the top which is previously support you have the bottoms he has that 20 ema going through the whole time right and this is the eu open not much going on over here and then at nine o'clock over here when it's the uh uk open so he notices that the bulls fail to break out. So he builds this little line over here. Um, and then you see that there's like a little bit of like an, um, an inside range in this bigger range. And you have the bulls fail over here. It hits the support, bulls fail again. And over here, as we break down, that would be an IRB. That's the inside range break. And he felt that was fair to, you know, short. And it ended up going all the way down here. So he says you could take profits in the low of this range, obviously, right? Because we had two uh, previously supports over here. But um, if you wanted to go all the way to the zero magnet, the 1.06, that's fair because it is the beginning of the UK opening hour. You know, that's a time where there's a lot of volume. So, um, you know... You have to determine again what your, uh, you know, how aggressive you are in your trading. You'll see as we go through these charts that he wasn't such an aggressive trader. But as long as you're consistent in the way you trade the markets, then you'll see consistent results. So some people might want to take their profits over here at the bottom of that range. Some people might want to push to the zero magnet. Okay, and then I kept on going down. So here we are over here, kept on going down, and it's building another little range over here right you have this bottom the top okay then you have a nice support over here which is confirming this bottom again it's hitting this bottom it's kind of like a little w over here maybe some people would want to go up over here and now you have a confirmation of some type of um resistance over here at this point this is again this is a fight for the zero for the 1.06 the double zero um and then he's noticing that the bulls did break out. Again, you don't have that great buildup that he likes, which we spoke about in the previous video where the EMA is pushing it up. So he's not gonna go over here and it comes back in. And then you have these little dojis and it shoots down. So this could be an IRB. It's not something that he would necessarily like to do, but you're seeing that diagonal um, and shooting down to the bottom of the range. Okay, and then it comes back up to the top of the range. Now it's around the EMA. Okay, this was a breakout, but this was not a breakout on the bottom of the range 
with the EMA pushing it out. So that's not something he's going to do. But watch over here. It breaks out, okay? And then it starts to have a lot of consolidation here coming back up to this, you know, resistance previously support. And, you know, not getting in back into the range. And he builds this little diagonal over here. And at some point over here, you know, everyone trader needs to know exactly at what point, but at some point over here, you're going to know that like, it's good to go short over here because it's just not going up anymore. How's it going to go up? I mean, it's possible. Anything's possible, but how's it going to go up after all that, you know, resistance over there and we've seen the failure. So at some point he felt it was fair to, to short over here. Okay. Um, he built that little ARB. This is an ARB because it's not the range anymore. There's like a new bottom of the range. That's how we explained it. The advanced range break is when you're understanding that the previous lows of the range is not the range anymore. There's actually a new low. And that's what was happening over here. The, the range was kind of the, the market was pushing the range, extending the range lower. And as we had that, you know, this is maybe one shot at it, you know, with that diagonal, or maybe you want to wait even till here till you have that pullback again. And then this nice uh, bearish engulfing candle, that could be a way um, to go in. Now, he says, you know, taking profits on the 80 over here is a good call. If you're aiming for a small perforation so as to pocket a few more pips on this trade, just be noticeable of the 80, right? Look at his charts over here. You have, he has the 40, the 60, the 80, the double zero, the 20, the 40. He looks at his charts with those levels. Levels are really important in trading. And excuse me, and that is uh, his levels of trading. So, you know, depends where you want to take the trades here. This might be a, a good point to get out because we're hitting the 80. Maybe you want to hold in a little bit more. But as we're building up this support, you know, if you didn't get out here, you still you got to get out. OK, um, now we're into the lunch hours and uh, it's just a lot of stagnant consolidation. Nothing really happening over here. He wouldn't trade you. This is low volume, low volume range, he calls it. And um, this is January 16th. U.S. bank holiday on the agenda. It's typical for traders to lay low after the U EU UK morning is over. So he's not looking for a trade over here. OK. Just an important point to point out over here is that you're not always needing to trade. You know, uh, sitting on your hands is also an important part of trading, a very, very important part of trading, even for a scalper. This is a guy who's a scalper. He's using a 70 tick chart. He's looking to only get 10 pips per trade, but very important to be patient. Okay. As we break out into the next day, and here we're going again to the, you know, the EU and the UK morning session. So prices is going up, hitting a high over here again on that double zero, and then breaks down into this little box over here. Okay, and here you have some, this is some support, it became resistance. Again, you have that bottom over here. So that's something to look out for. And then as it didn't reach up here, and then it reached again down here by the 60, it's making some support. So you here you have one bottom, two, three. So you have a nice little bottoming box and here you have your tops and look at that little, you know, pressure until this bullish engulfing candle right out of the box and with the EMA pushing it out to, to Bob Volman, that is a IRB in its a beauty. And it, you see it went up and he didn't even wait for the break in the retest like a lot of traders do to him with the EMA pushing it out and all that pressure. That's enough reason to get in at that time and you could get your 10 pips, which clearly this did. Okay, here it is again. And now look how look how much it did go up. All right, it went up and up and up and you have the higher high, the higher low and we're going up in the market, right? <clears throat> okay, at this point, you clearly see some type of, you know, topping formation. And, and you see the market did pull back after that topping formation and then go over here. And, are, and now you have these like two dojis and then this um, bullish engulfing candle. So, and a huge one at that, in, the, in that fact. So, you know, he says, no denying the bull pressure here. This is a continuation in the highs. So you gotta be careful because it's in the highs and you're about to approach this new round number of, 
you know, 700. We were looking before at, um, at 600, and now we're at 700. So it depends on your trading method. How um, aggressive are you? You have to know you're going into the round number, you're pushing out, you're at the highs, you know, he likes to wait for the action to settle down a little. You know you're in that new number zone, and then you're going to go. But obviously, this is some type of a valid trade, you know, a continuation trade. You have the nice EMA pushing it out. You have these double dojis. This could be like a DD or something, like we spoke about in the previous video. And it had, you know, obviously a lot of traders were pushing it out there, as you see that nice um, bullish engulfing candle. Um, okay, the market was just kind of like... A nice fight in this um, 700 range, you know, going up and down, but not really getting to the 20. Again, he's looking at those levels of the 20, the 00, the 68, nothing really doing over here. And it's just kind of like going down a little bit more. Bears seem to slowly get the upper hand, <clears throat> but too choppy, you know, with a tight stop. Again, you're a scalper. If you're going to have a tight stop, so then you got to be wary and you got to make really good decisions about which trades to take and which not, or else they're just going to be stopped out all the time. Um, as we get into the U.S. Open, I'm um, kind of consolidated the chart to show a lot more um, candles over here. And we're just going up and up. Um, doesn't seem to be finding anything. Again, we're still in that zone of the 0, zero and the 20. Okay, fine. So the next day, this is already what, Wednesday, the 18th, we kind of build um, a little bit of a range over here. We have these highs, a breakout, but again, not with the EMA going back in. You know, I guess th this is not good either. And didn't feel that this was proper over here because you have these highs, so a little bit scary. It's a range with bearish features, he calls it, right? So it starts to go really down after this kind of like double top over here on top of the range. And here you have these bottoms. And now we're starting to build like a lower topping formation over here. Right? So that you have very bearish action in this range between the 0, 0 and the 80. And you have this top. And now you have topping, the bears just, you know, just wicking at, the, the bulls are just wicking out, really can't get anything going. <clears throat> and then we start to hit, you know, the bear, the bulls are just failing over here. One more shot at it, and now we're getting under the EMA, okay? And as we get under the EMA, this wasn't a good enough breakout over here. Um, we're really at the 80 level, so you got to be careful over here, and now... We see another bottoming, bottoming formation under the range with the EMA, and finally that breakout, and that would be a really nice um, ARB. He calls this a poor break, um, again, because it's in the lunch hour, so there's not a lot of volume over there. Um, also, just broke out straight. There was no like little um, pressure over here, or no like you know back and forth. It just broke out. It was really poor, and a second time. And then the bulls failed. That's another little, little sign. You got to read all these little signs. And then over here, this ARB, you know, really did well. Again, this is all hindsight. I'm just showing you what, what he said. Nobody's saying that we took these trades or that he took these trades. But it's definitely showing you, um, in hindsight, how to, how to see the market. So this would definitely be that ARB that we spoke about. Okay, so now as we get into the lunch hours... Um, the US lunch hours, right? And we're building like another little range here. As you see, like in the EU, in this time, you gotta get used to the market conditions. These were all ranges. Ranges, and I have the IRBs, the inside range breaks, the range breaks, the advanced range breaks. But, um, you know, if you're looking at a market that's not really trending, then you gotta get, you gotta get comfortable with trading range breaks and advanced range breaks or whatever it is because or else you're just not going to have any trades so it's nice to have a system that could trade the continuations in the trend and also be able to trade out of consolidation <clears throat> okay so here you have the the nice bottoming pattern um again we're sticking towards that um ema here's the the 80 
and we break up, but again, it's a little far. There's not a lot of buildup over here. Again, we're seeing that there's like an ARB, there's like another new extension of this range. And at this point, when we break over it, that's gonna be an ARB. Now, faltering follow through in the 90 level, not a good sign. So he's already noticing over here that even though he's going for 10 pips, you gotta manage your trade to some extent. And he sees that you have these wicks, it wasn't really a good breakout, didn't have that. And now at this point, when it comes back into, you know, you were protecting your, your trade over here under this level. And when it comes over here, you're gonna exit. Um, next day, we got this UK open and he's noticing this little push up and another little small range over here between the 40 and the 60. And when the bears fail down here under this bottoming pattern, the bears fail. Um, it doesn't have a really good, um, doesn't have a really good breakout over here because it doesn't have that pressure. Now you have the bottoming and then you see over here that the bears fail and you see that the bulls start to take control. Now we're above the EMA. And a little push out over here, not great because we had, we wanted the buildup to be against that high and it just pushed out without it and then pulled back with that little wick candle and that could maybe be an ARB. And also one thing he noticed over here is the A to B equals C to D. A lot of times what happens over here is when you have this pull flag situation, so here's the pull, and then it makes the flag, and then the pole again would be, the C to D would be exactly as the A to B. So that's another you know, confluence that this ARB might work because as we're pulling out, it should equal similarly the candlestick pattern that we saw in the A to B. So you have, you have that pull over here and we got to the 60. He was putting his stop over here um, because he sees clearly this uh, bottoming and then he got shaked out over here. I think that's really what happened, yeah, that's good. Okay, so as we're going over here, um, just really not a lot going on it during the lunch hours. Um, the 50 level is not really happening over here, and you see like just it's bottoming, 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 and you have that EMA, and you build that little you know, block break in the range, and that's why it's an inside range break going from the bottom to the top. You know, a lot of people just want to shoot it up when it's on the bottom of the range or, or, or trade it down when it's on the top of the range. This is a method where you know, it gives you some confluence, some reason to, be, to get in, not just to say, oh, we're at the bottom, let me trade up. Or like, oh, we're at the top, let me trade down. No, you see over here that it was bottoming out, but it doesn't have any push to get out. Not only that, you have these little highs, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Look at that. You know, it's like a little bigger over here. You have these, these candles going on over here right at that little line and then finally break up. There's no reason to think that it wouldn't totally shoot up, which it did to hit that 60 level. And, um, you know, you're going to want to get, get out over here in the high of the range if you're still in. Okay, so there were, in this case, there was U.S. news um, at, uh, at this time. So you see the market got a lot more trendy, going down, pulling up. This might be a little bit of a continuation. Bob himself, it seems, in his notes, did not um, make these trades. He wasn't such a big, he was more of like a, a range trader in this time. Um, but here would be like a, a reason to shoot down. And then you're hitting, you're hitting a bottom over here. We're going higher and higher and higher. And now we're starting to get lower again. Okay, but he doesn't really give much notes on these. Alrighty. Um, we had that bull swing, and now, you know, we're going down quite aggressively. Um, so, and we bottom out over here. Um, here you have this little M pattern. The market's still kind of volatile over here. Here's the zero, here's the 20. And these are kind of aggressive trades in his uh, estimation. But here would be one interesting idea because you have the M pattern and it kind of like has that bottom over here. Again, you have the EMA pretty close. Um, that's one way to go. Or maybe on the retest, another way to go. But in his estimation, still pretty aggressive. Okay, fine. And as we're going into the lunch hours, we're kind of building another range over here. Here's the tops. And we're just getting 
you know, a little bit of back and forth over here. And we're going higher and higher. This is not good enough buildup. And we're starting to hit like a new little high over here above the range, which is why it would be in ARB. We come back into the range, then we're meeting those highs again, back into the range. And look how the EMA just like kind of like leads it right out over there. And that would be the ARB. Okay, and eventually it did pop out. Um, Got to keep an eye on the 50. Here's the 40, here's the 60, here's the 50. So definitely keep an eye on that because obviously that's a major level. And we pull out over here, we have our first, first pullback and now we're really at the 50. So, you know, this is definitely a, you know, a little block break over here at BB because you have these um, dojis and the EMA is pushing it out again. But just one thing you got to know about is that you're right at the 50. So there definitely could be rejection over here. But you do have a, you know, you are with the trend and you do have these, um, this real nice, um, you have this real nice buildup against the EMA. And we're going to go up and you're going to target the 60. That's what he would do. Okay. And um, you're going to have that other pull flag situation you're going down. You're hitting these bottoms. Here's the UK. And we're hitting the bottoms. And just a typical range break. He doesn't show the top of the range over here. Not so important. You have the bottoms of the range. You have the pullback. Um, you have the, the bottoming. You have the little pullback right on the EMA and pushing it right out. And you have the A to B, C to D. Didn't get to the, to the D. Um, maybe it did later. But here would be a nice place to uh, pull out right at the 60. <clears throat> okay, um, in the morning of the 20th, just really, you know, kind of very blah not really doing much, really just hanging around the 60. Um, a little breakout and a pullback. This could be a continuation. Again, you have to keep in mind the 50. And uh, here's another one, maybe to the 40. Okay, here we are pre-US open. And we're pushing up, we're kind of like retracing everything that we saw before. And now we have a little topping formation. Maybe this would be the top of a range. And, you know, Bob says it takes guts to fire long here because you're going right against the 60 level. Um, and we were going up, up, up. And you're just going to, you want, you're considering that there's going to be a continuation right into the U.S. Open. Um, so that's something that he would consider aggressive. But this would be kind of like an ARB. Um, we have that. Here's the tops. And you have like the new little top over here. And at this point to go up. But it seemed to have worked out um, in this case. Okay, as we're going into the open, um, this is what we saw over here. And then you have that pullback. And now you have, you're showing the bottom of this range, which is really like this consolidation over here. It has that pullback. Um, at this point, it wasn't really great um, pressure because you have, maybe it was decent pressure, but you have all this consolidation over here. So you're going to go right into it. That would be, you, I, I didn't see enough over here to really, um, pull out, but you're definitely seeing the bulls keeping it up over here. And so here you have one shot. Again, we pulled back again to the bottom of this little block, this little range. And at this point with the EMA pushing it out, this could be an IRB. So it seems like even though you had this consolidation over here, you, you do see that the bull, the bears are kind of failing too. And we're still keeping the bullish pressure up. You see it over here, going back, coming again over the, e, uh, the EMA. And at this point, a nice little, you know, bullish engulfing candle. And at this point, you just want to shoot up and it, it did go long. And here we are over there. Um, we kind of like topped out over here, right back to the EMA. And here would be a block break. And over here, this is not a good sign because you have um, a very bearish engulfing candle over here and you're right at the 80. So you might want to get out over there. Um, what else we got? Here's the lunch hours. He didn't, you know, he says, looks like big parties are settling their positions ahead of the weekend, right? You got to keep in mind all the factors over here. You got to keep in mind the fundamentals too. And here we are, we're on the, we're in the lunch hours of Friday. Um, you got Friday's a different day than the rest of the days of the week because, you know, the big parties and just people are leaving work and you don't have the same volume. People just want to settle their positions 
a lot of people don't hold their positions over the weekend, so it's something to keep in mind over here. Very choppy, just up and down around the 60 and the 80. And so he's not making a trade over here. And what happened over here, the end of the week into Friday evening, nothing doing. All right, guys, um, I hope that this was helpful for, t for you. Um, these notes that Bob gave were, were really awesome. Um, he like showed you how he looks at the market. Um, if you got a, a guru that you follow, I think it's important to be able to like see their notes and like follow them, you know, on their group and see like how they are looking at the market today. It's one thing, you know, to see videos and say, Hey, this is like, um, my trading strategy. How does it look today? Follow them for a number of weeks, see how they're forecasting the market, see how they're saying, um, they made the trades and, you know, get a good look at like what that trader is doing, what he's all about, how he trades, how he looks at this current market. Is it a trending market? Is it a choppy market? Is it a ranging market? And that's how we're going to understand, you know, how to adapt in these different markets. Um, this is just, again, one method of trading, a scalping method. Um, but you're seeing, you're, you're understanding, you know, candlestick language, you're understanding market conditions. And you're seeing the ability to wait on aggressive trades. So I think all these things are very beneficial for traders to just see that, you know, we're not just looking to be trigger happy and shoot all the time, but we're, we're trying to understand, you know, where are we in the market? Are we in a U.S. session? Are you are you we in um, a U.K. session? Is it a Friday? Um, is is uh, what levels are we on? Are we at the zero zero? which it could be a magnet, which could be an adverse magnet. All these things are important to understand when you're trading, especially when you're being a scalper and you have to make really quick decisions and you have to keep really tight stops. So it's super important. But even for the swing traders, everything is a good piece of information. All the information that you know about the market, about your pair is going to help you stay in the game longer and keep profitable and make better decisions. So I hope this uh, message and I hope this video was really good for you guys. Um, you know, leave your comments. Let me know what you think, what kind of videos you'd like to see. You know, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and um, I'm happy to share it with you guys. All right, DD out.